when I, when I think of preventive measures, I was thinking about what my kids get at the dentist. And on, in addition to the fluoride that's suggested, another one is a, a sealant that's put on the teeth to prevent cavities. Is there benefit in that or what is, and I don't even know what's in it, to be honest with you, but what's going on there? Well, there is benefit in that and you should find out what's in it because you don't want to use one that has BPA, bisphenol A in it. And there's another version of it, bis -gym A, and they say it metabolizes to BPA. Well, that's a different kind of plastic. You don't have to use that kind, but sealants are a great idea. When I was a kid growing up, I got, you know, 13 cavities in my molars when I was 13. Well, what happens when you're 13 is you get your permanent 12-year molars, you already got your six-year molars, there's eight of them, and then you got your bicuspids. And so basically I had a filling in all my molars and bicuspids. Well, why is there's a groove in the center of those molars and bicuspids in white Anglo-Saxons anyway? And they're very deep groove in the center of the tooth. The Native Americans have a different tooth. Indians have a different tooth. We're not all the same. But if you've got really deep grooves in the center of your tooth, it makes sense to take a sandblaster, blow all the food and debris and germs out of there, and then very carefully seal that up with a little layer of plastic. And uh, it's called composite or a sealant or something like that. What you don't want to do is to paint those teeth with a varnish because the varnish is a resin from a tree in South America that has been saturated with 50,000 parts per million fluoride and then you paint that tooth, that child's going to swallow that fluoride. Fluor no fluoride is intended to be swallowed to prevent tooth decay. The FDA has never improved any fluoride containing substance intended to be swallowed to prevent tooth decay because it doesn't work that way. You swallow it, it poisons you. You paint it on the teeth, the germs that happen to be around there, they get poisoned. But then so does the gum, so does the, the cheek, so does the tongue. And then when the food goes by, the varnish wears off, gets in the food, goes down into the child's stomach, gets absorbed through the in gut and intestines, goes into the bone. And that will be in their bones the day they die. It's a very retentive poison and it accumulates in bone. That's why the symptoms of fluoride overdose are either damaged to the teeth when the teeth are forming because it poisons those, those tooth buds, or joint problems, bone problems, bone spurs, ligaments, ligament tears, all that stuff is fluoride related. Why do we want to do that? It doesn't make any sense. But do you know another element in the periodic chart that has its own team of lawyers? Fluoride does because it leaks out of every major industry in this country and almost any country in the world. Cement kiln, brick factories, steel smelting, zinc smelting, you burn coal, fluorides in the coal comes out. So if it's got a chimney, it's probably leaking fluoride. And then we had the EPA came in and said you can't do that. And that's piling up big, and pi big piles of it from the phosphate fertilizer mining industry. So they said, well, we should put it in the water. And so they put it in the water to get rid of it. It's a deadly poison that they have to dispose of it as a hazardous material because it'll eat through concrete, stainless steel. It'll eat through you. If you took your hand and dipped it in the stuff that they're adding to the water supply, you'll die. That's how toxic, it would be a mild burn. You say, oh, it just, it didn't burn me that much. And then pretty soon your heart would go slower. And then in a fairly short amount of time, you'd go into cardiac arrest. Now, how do I know that? A water worker was spritzed with maybe a half a cup of the stuff and he was wearing protective equipment. He was following OSHA. He had a shield, he had a leather apron, he had nitrile gloves and got a little bit on his exposed shirt sleeve and the shower was broken in that room so, you know, well, and my boss said, I'll go on home. And he was headed home and he got to feeling bad. If he hadn't gone by that big blue H meant hospital and turned in, he would have died. Because as he turned in, he got worse. He got to the emergency room. They pulled him out of his truck. And if they hadn't plugged him in to intervene his calcium to keep his heart from stopping, he'd have died. The, the people putting the stuff in your water did not know that. He's permanently crippled, by the way.